Hi guys, welcome to lesson two of my free live sewing classes with T. I'm T of Sewing by T, my sewing blog, and Simply by T, my fabric shop. As we're waiting for people to hop on live, and I know that there will be people coming, I wanted to take a second and answer one of the questions that I got today. Well, actually, on Monday. So the question was, hey T, what pattern are you wearing? So it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to see my outfit for today. You only get to see like from here up. I actually have on my patterns for Pirates Cocoon Cardigan in pink and white rayon spandex. You can find that in the Simply by T shop. And I'll scoot up here just for a second. And this is our ivory poly, double brush poly. That's also in the Simply by T shop. And it's a Love Notions blusette. So there you go. That is what I'm wearing today. I hope you did not miss yesterday's sale on Walwack Mara 100, those giant cones. I posted it all over the group, and I know there are a lot of people talking about it. So I hope you got a chance to grab those. Whether you did or not, I failed you just a teensy little bit. So head back over to Walwack and request yourself a catalog because that catalog has a page of Walwack 100 and it has a color chart that you'll be able to use to match your thread colors to your fabric. So that's gonna be really valuable to you. And I apologize in advance if you made the same mistake I did the first time I ordered. Mara 100 white is not number one, it is number 800. So if you ordered number one, I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to return it and get number 800. And if you didn't order white yesterday, kind of keep it in the back of your mind that white is number 800, not number one. So today we finally get to talk about fabric, which of course is my favorite part. Yay, fabric. So here's the thing, and I'm sure that everybody's going to agree with me. Shopping for fabric online can be really scary because you can't touch the fabric. You can't see the fabric that well. You may not be able to tell how well it drapes. And not every fabric shop has somebody who can come in and tell you, hey, this fabric is for this or this fabric works well for that. Not every fabric company has sewn all the fabric in their shop. The difference with Simply by T is IT so all of the fabrics in the shop. So there is nothing in the shop that I have not sewn, although it did take me a little while to get to the stretch denim. So if you're looking to try something new, you're not sure, the best thing I can recommend is to order a swatch sample. You can get a swatch sample from the Simply by T shop very, very easily. Just send us $1 via PayPal to simplybyt at gmail.com. That's S-I-M-P-L-Y B-Y-T-I at gmail.com. And then just shoot me a message and I will get you three swatch samples in the mail and you'll have everything you need. So the one thing that you should expect from every fabric company that they should be able to tell you is what are the stretch percentages on the fabric they carry. If you can get that information, you're gonna get a lot closer to picking the right fabric for your project than if they just say, oh, well, this fabric is cotton lycra. Not all cotton lycra is the same. You're gonna find that they have varying degrees of stretch percentages, varying weights. So having those swatches in your hands makes a big difference. At Simply by T, we carry 14 different kinds of fabric. We have double brush poly, French terry, cotton lycra, rayon spandex, ITY, Ponte, Under Armour, Nike moisture wicking fabric, stretch lace, stretch twill, stretch denim, stretch poplin sweater knits, and stretch chambray. So those are the 14 fabrics we carry in our shop. I've sewn every single one of them. I can tell you anything you may ever need to know. We only have time today to talk about two fabrics. And so I'm gonna get through that as quickly as I can to make sure that you have everything you need to know to use our fabrics well. So fabric number one is our ITY. And if you're familiar with your with my shop, you'll notice this is a fabric that we have, I think in three different colorways, but it could be four. And ITY is a polyester spandex knit 
you're going to notice that it has really, really good horizontal stretch, like just amazing over the top stretch. And then it's going to have right around 50% vertical stretch. Now, ITY is good for projects that need drape. It is amazing for swing skirts and swing dresses, wrap dresses. It is amazing for cowls. I'm just gonna hold this up here and you're gonna notice how it just kind of just settles itself down. There are lots of fabrics that are not good for cowl neck tops, but ITY is amazing. When you're sewing with ITY, ITY is a lighter weight fabric, so you are going to need a 7511 ballpoint needle. And I wanna point out that on Monday, I kept calling it a 7510. It is not a 7510. A 10 would be a 70, it's a 7511. It's not gonna be that big a difference whether you bought the 7010s or the 7511s, but I stick mostly to the 7511s. So when you're sewing with ITY, you're gonna to need to lower your presser foot pressure, possibly a lot from where you normally sew your cotton lycras. You're going to want to reduce your presser foot pressure if that is an adjustment on your machine. And when you are sewing with your fabric, you want to make sure that your machine and you are not applying tension across your seams. If you do that, you're going to end up with wavy seams and nobody's happy with wavy seams. The biggest struggle that most people have with these lightweight fabrics like ITY is that they are a pain to hem unless you have a lot of tricks in your pocket. So what are your options? You can try to just fold your hem over and use like one million pins. I can tell you that unless you really do use one million pins, the fabric is going to shift. It's a really slinky fabric and that's what makes it amazing to wear, but that slinkiness is what will cause your hems to slip and then you're going to get bunching and ugliness. So you have options. Option number one for helping you hem is this product right here. It's a little bit hard to see, but this is called Wonder Tape. And Wonder Tape is a two-sided washout tape. So it's, yeah, let's see. So there we go, I just ripped a little piece off right there. And if you wanted to use this to hold your hem in place, you would stick it to your fabric along your hem allowance, just like that. You peel away this paper side, just like that and use it to hold your hem in place, just like so. Obviously, you're gonna actually measure out your hem, but this is good enough for what I'm trying to show you. Now, that will stabilize your seam. You'll notice that it's not that pullable, but your seam may still slip someplace else. I advise if you're going to use Wonder Tape that you try to get it as close to where you're going to be stitching your hem as you can because that's going to be the most stable section. The advantage to the Wonder Tape is number one, you can reposition it, which is really good. And number two, it washes out so it doesn't leave anything in your hem for later. But sometimes that is not stable enough to stabilize your hem and get you what you need. Your next option is a product called Knit Hem Tape and it looks a lot like this. It is fusible on one side, so you could iron it and attach it to your fabric, and then it is stretchy, so you'll know it stretches just a little bit like that. And you would actually place that inside your hem, and when I do this, I like to use a hem tape that's actually the width of the hem that I wanna make, so if I have a one inch hem, I use a one inch hem tape. You're gonna fold it over, you can, like I said, it will, it is adhesive, so you can iron it on, or you can just use it to fold over and hold it in that seam allowance. That's going to leave your hem a little bit more stretch, but it is going to stay inside that hem. It will add a little bit of weight to your hem, which can actually be an advantage, but some people don't like to have that extra layer inside of there. Now, I kind of lied just a second there because this isn't actually real knit hem tape. Knit hem tape comes in a roll um, and usually it's around three yards or so that you buy. 
it can be a little bit expensive. And as you know, just like with my needles, I don't like things that are expensive. I like to save money on my projects. So instead, you can buy what's called fusible knit tricots. I actually buy this by the bolt, so I will wait for Joann's to have one of those 50% off a bolt sale and then like a 25% off coupon on, on, on top of that. And all you have to do is take this, cut it into the strip width that you need for your hem. You'll see it stretches, so make sure you cut the stretchy side because the other side, not stretchy. And you can fold that into your hem the same way that I was showing you to do what looked like knit hem tape, but is not knit hem tape. You do have one other option if you happen to run out of fusible knit tricot or you just don't want to buy fusible knit tricot, is you can take some of your fabric scraps and cut essentially a hem tape. And you'll cut it to the width of your hem, you're gonna fold it into your hem and that's gonna add a third layer to your hem, it's going to make it more stable. If you are struggling with that, consider the stretchiness of your fabric. So if I was going to be making hem tape out of this ITY, I would look at, okay, the horizontal stretch is really big, but the vertical isn't. So I would make my strips on the vertical so there's a little stretch in the hem, but that it'll help stabilize it a little bit more. So the next fabric I'm going to talk to you about is actually, not a new fabric, it's ITY. And you're going to be a little bit confused, but trust me here. So this is a strike off from our shop. We've got round two pre-orders going through right now. So if you are a member of our Facebook group or regularly check our Facebook page, you might recognize this ombre fabric. And this is a double brushed poly. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, wait till you just said that we're talking about ITY again. So ITY and double brush poly. Double brush poly is ITY and they brushed it. So all the things that apply to ITY apply to double brush poly. That means that it's going to need the 7511 ballpoint needle. You're gonna lower your thread tensions. You're gonna lower your presser foot pressure if that's an adjustment on your machine. We carry 200 GSM double brush poly in our shop. It is my personal preference because, as you can see, oh, I'll do my best, it is opaque. You cannot see my hand back there aside from the fact that you can see the shape of my hand. I prefer fabrics that are opaque because I like to wear colorful bras. What can I say? It's a silly thing, but that's what I prefer. And even on the white sections, you can see here, you're not seeing through the fabric and I've got a pretty intense light shining through here. What is our double brush poly good for? And I, I actually failed you, so I wanna go back just a quick step. Um, ITY, what is it good for? I think I actually, no, I did cover it, sorry. Get myself a little bit mixed up here. So double brush poly is amazing for leggings. Everybody knows about LuLaRoe and their double brush poly leggings. So 200 GSM double brush poly, excellent for leggings. It's good for dresses. It's good for skirts. The one project that I wouldn't use it for, and that is my personal preference on how it works and not necessarily the fabric itself is, I don't like it for wrap dresses. I feel like because of how sticky it can be, it can lead to a wardrobe malfunction and it doesn't slide back into place in the crossover. So I guess it would be okay if you tack it down, but I don't like to add the extra step of tacking down my wrap dresses, so that wouldn't be an option for me. All right, so I did really great today and I managed to squeeze everything in in under 15 minutes. I wanted to make sure that anybody who brought questions now is a good time to start um, posting those now. If you found this class helpful, please, please share. That's how we're gonna make sure that everybody who needs this information gets it. If you are not watching this video live, you can send me your questions via email or through our Facebook page. So email would be that same simplybyt at gmail.com or our Facebook page simplybyt. 
I will include links at the end of this video for Wonder Tape, for Knit Hemming Tape, and to see the fusible knit tricuffled. Although I do believe the last time I ordered it, I ordered it on Amazon and there was some kind of sale or deal that made it cheaper than Joanne's even with a coupon. The questions I received via email after Monday's class. So the first one was, do I have any tips for ripping out the lightning bolt stitch? And the sad fact is that that stitch is just about impossible to rip out. I use that stitch and I don't actually lock stitch at the beginning of the seam or the end of the seam. I find that the seams don't come apart simply because of how tight that seam is on my machine. If you think that you're going to need to rip out a seam, I really suggest basting it in first and not using the lightning bolt stitch until you're sure. I will admit that if I get to the point where I'm almost done and there's a seam that needs to be ripped out that had lightning bolt stitch, it will probably be faster for me to make an entire new, entirely new garment from scratch than it would be to try to rip out those stitches. And that probably sounds really wasteful, but my time is valuable. The second question is, how do you know when to add elastic into a seam for recovery? And this is a little bit of a tricky question because whether you add elastic as partly personal choice, partly the design of the garment itself, and partly the type of fabric you're using. So I absolutely recommend anytime you're sewing with a sweater knit that all of the seams get stabilized, every single one, because if you don't, your garment is going to grow throughout the day. Sweater knit just doesn't have the stability on its own to not stretch out. You may decide if you're using a lighter weight fabric that you want to stabilize those seams. So what would count as a lighter weight fabric? An ITY, the rayon spandexes in our shop would count as a lighter weight fabric. I do not stabilize seams in double brush poly with the 200 GSM that we carry in the shop. But that doesn't mean that a lighter double brush poly wouldn't benefit from stabilizing those seams. If we're not talking about sweater knits, the places that you would most want to stabilize would be the shoulder seam here. And it doesn't matter what type of shoulder seam it is, you're gonna to wanna to stabilize from the neckline. For example, this is a dolman sleeve, so I would stabilize all the way to the end here where the rest of the sleeve attaches. And the purpose of that is to keep your sleeves from growing and to keep the shoulder seam itself from stretching out from the weight of your garment. The other place that you'll find that you might want elastic is if you add a gathered skirt onto a body. That seam can get stretched out just from sewing it on because of the amount of fabric that's going underneath it. And the weight of that skirt may be heavier than your garment plans for. Part of the reason why it's so important to know the stretch percentages is that the designer designed your garment or the, your, the pattern based on, for example, 25% length stretch. If they are adding a gathered skirt onto that, they are expecting the garment to stretch out a certain amount. So if you end up using a fabric that has a higher stretch percentage, that is even more likely that you're going to need to put elastic into that seam. That is all the questions that I have for today. I don't see any new stuff coming up. I wanna thank you for joining me. Tomorrow, we are gonna to try to get through all the other fabrics in the shop, which sounds like a big undertaking, but a lot of them get lumped together. And then I've been so happy with the turnout that we've had with the live class so far just from Monday that I was thinking that we might continue this on next week, maybe doing a once a week thing. I will be putting up a survey asking people which day would work best for them and that way I can do uh, just a weekly check-in give you some tips and tricks so far some of my ideas have been how to troubleshoot your sewing machine when it doesn't want to do any of the things that you want it to do more tips and tricks for hemming things and I could certainly do a live sew along so I'm going to include that survey in the event page 
and I'd really appreciate it if you could just check in there and let me know what you're thinking. I will see you guys tomorrow with more Simply by Tea Fabrics. Thanks. Bye.